Welcome everyone to the 2023 PDGA Professional Disc Golf World Championships presented by LL Bean here from beautiful Smuggler's Notch, Vermont. I'm Matt Rothstein of the PDGA alongside Corey Merle, Johnny Disc Golf himself. Corey, yes, thank sir. you so much for joining us today. Couldn't be more excited to be broadcasting here live from Smuggler's Notch. This is a place you know well. Tell us what it was like for you to come back to this place. Oh, I mean, honestly, you're saying it right now. I just got the goosebumps. It's a very special place for me. Uh, I have family in Vermont, so that plays a factor. But this was one of the first elite-level courses I have ever even seen with my eyes all the way back in 2015. Uh, I've been trying to come here every year since. I think I maybe have only missed one. But the 2018 Worlds stands out for me as one of the most iconic events uh, that I have ever been to. The beauty, just the play on the course, Barsby, just an iconic moment there in the 18th green. I cannot wait to see what this week holds for us. Well, sometimes you're on a disc golf course and you see history get made. Sometimes you show up to a disc golf course knowing that history is going to get made. And that's the treat we have this week is that no matter what happens, this is going to be a memorable event. Uh, we have put together a little preview for the events, um, get everyone going. So let's take a look at that. Beautiful. Let's do it. If everyone laid out their tour schedule and they had to pick one tournament to win, it's going to be Worlds. It would mean way more than I would say right now, but it's one of my lifelong goals. I'm slightly in disbelief. It's the best feeling in the world. It doesn't feel real. I don't know if uh, somebody can wake me up from this dream. I've never showed that much emotion on the course in 12 years, I don't think. <laughs> I finally got a great one. It's a big moment for my life, at least, you know, my disc golf career. I thought of Valerie tapping in her putt, Paige Pierce, Katrina Allen, Sarah Hopham. It's great being back. Smuggler's Notch Resort is second to none. This is maybe the number one disc golf complex in the world. Five rounds is a lot of holes. You have to always be on your toes and can't take any shots for granted. There will be no more easy wins with the stacked fields we have now. I have to beat the course and not let anybody else sneak into my mind. Someone at my level, I feel like I can take control. This is me, this is why soccer. I feel like I'm a better golfer than just a two-time world champion. I'm actually living my dream right now. Uh, I feel at ease. I like these, these moments and these situations. It's the one that everyone wants, so I just want to show that I want it more. Some of the images we saw in that video are so memorable, so iconic. I think of Barsby hugging those chains, yeah. or Paige jumping out, uh, jumping up, and just you know, getting that first world title. Um, just gets me excited for what we're going to see this week. No question. I mean, the energy level at the Worlds is unmatched by any. You know, we have a lot of tournaments that play at the same course each and every year, and I think one of the special things about the World Championships is that. We get a winner, you know, it's on a variety of landscapes. So it's not maybe one person that would have the ideal chance every year. You get new people, new winners. And I think this year we're going to see a lot of people towards the top. Uh, and who knows who's going to take it down. Well, that, that 2018 edition was notable for having two first-time winners. Gave the impression that Smugs can produce a surprise winner. Mm -hmm. But also we see at GMC, uh, the, the Pro Tour stop here every year, we get somebody like Ricky who's who wins on the regular here. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see. No, no question. Ricky has dominated here for the better part of a decade. Uh, before the Pro Tour was here, it was like an annual win just on his calendar. Uh, and once the Pro Tour has uh, really established its presence here, he's gone on to win it a few more times. So, you know, I think for a lot of the people at home, he's one of the people that uh, a lot of people are choosing. But again, with the talent depth in MPO and FPO, it's difficult to project exactly who's going to win on these dynamic courses. Well, it's always fun to see the tour show up and for players to get their first uh, first look at these courses. We as the fans also get our first look at the courses. During Worlds, we get to it a little bit early every year. We have a mixed doubles competition mm -hmm. that takes place the weekend before uh, an MPO player, an FPO player teaming up for doubles. 
uh, we had a great one this year. Plenty of coverage of it, and we grabbed some highlights. Um, I want to show you those highlights right now. Let's take, talk about it on the other side. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Pro Worlds Mixed Doubles Championship. So this card here, we have defending champs Macy Veladiaz and Calvin Heimberg. And we also have Katie Tati and Jakob Semerad uh, being able to kind of run it if your partner's under the basket with the best shot format. Calvin got caught up a little bit as Katie throws a perfect turnover shot. So let's see if Katie can secure this birdie single-handedly. She sure does. That is a good way to start. Yeah, I would say this is kind of an in-between distance for a lot of players with it being so much downhill that they're stuck between discs. So you either need to power up on, you know, a slower speed disc or you got to kind of tone it down and give it a touch shot on a fairway or a driver. Calvin's going to find himself just a little outside the circle here, but pin high. <laughs> Makes light work of that, taking them to three under par. Missy up first here. This looks very nice. Yeah. Just needs to gently drift oh, over perfect. and it does. Oh, get a little bit of uh, action there at the end. Over in his hand. Gannon has a Falcor in his hand. <laughs> Silver can't believe it. Two hot rounds from round one. Owen Scoggins and Joel Freeman, Kristen Tatar and Silver Lot. This looks like Kristen is opting for the backhand. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Great oh, shot. Wonderful. About 20 feet or so for Silver here. And that's going to put a green on the scorecard to bring him back down to even. Team Scoggins. So we know she has a great forehand. Yeah. Puts it right there with Kristen. Gives them an opportunity to get back on the birdie train. Yeah. Cool. It was close from Joel, but he was able to sneak it over the basket. It's a very challenging hole here to end. And the wind gusts are picking up. You can see the flags in the back. And that is just holding on by a line. Ooh. I like this look from Joel. It's going on that right side gap with a flex forehand. Good smart decision just to make sure you keep it center of the fairway. Oh, he's going to lay that up there and yeah, they know it. They're going to take it down. So we see Joel here for the final putt of this mixed doubles. Congratulations, Joel and Owen. Our winners of the mixed doubles here at the World Championships, Joel Freeman and Olm Scoggins. They really dominated this event. They looked so good out there. They just executed. They carried each other when they needed it. Well, last week at Deeglo, we, we saw Calvin throw in twice for Eagle from the fairway. This week, it was Gannon's turn. One of the benefits of the, the doubles format, Missy, is, uh, Missy parks it and gets to run it absolutely just being able to say green light to a professional player like that's going to be a treat no matter what we see absolutely and of course we saw joel freeman and owen scoggins pull this down own uh, a first time elite series winner in fpo last week at deglo looking for her first world title in fpo we're going to talk a bit more about her later on in the show <sighs> It is such a treat to see her playing well. She's one of the most entertaining players we have on tour, wholesome, and just genuinely loves to be out here and loves disc golf. So her and Joel able to take it down by four strokes over the field. She said she had no idea what the scores were, anything. It's just an unbelievable performance. Well, we saw him going head-to-head -head there with, uh, with Kristen Tatar and Silver Lott. Um, mm -hmm. So cool to see them playing together and playing well. They fell off a little bit there in the second round, but they were right in the hunt. So, yes. All good signs for Owen and Joel heading into the main event. That was on Saturday. On Sunday, we, we turned to the field events. Um, our field events, we have um, distance competition, we mm -hmm. have putting, and mm -hmm. we have the edge skill shot. Um, running down some of the results, of course, we had Owen and Joel taking down the mixed doubles. In skill shot, it was Madison Walker and Charlie Goodpasture taking it down. Madison seems to own the skill shot competition. She's won it multiple years in the uh, in the past. She's got a great sidearm, good backhand, knows all her angles. 
not a shock to see her win. Uh, Charlie Goodpasture, though, jumping into the spotlight here. A Florida area pro, does tour a little bit. Uh, I know he spent a lot of time with Ken Climo back in the day, so it's good to see his name back in the leaderboards. And then in the long drive competition, no surprise at all to see AB take it down with yeah. a bomb, 610 feet. But Ellie Midling in the FBO, she won the junior FJ18 division this year at World, so a junior world champion. Um, coming here to FPO World Championship and, and wins the long drive competition. So impressive. And from such a young face, I'm you know curious to see exactly how committed she is going to be to the tour going forward. But uh, regardless, I think it's a budding star. And then um, in the putting competition, um, Sarah Gilpin and Eagle McMahon. Eagle hitting 49 of 54 possible. I'm told it is the highest score we've, we've been able to track down in the history of the field event putting competition. Wow, that is, that's unbelievable. I mean, uh, we haven't seen a ton of Eagle this year just to do to, due to some injuries. Um, you know, he hasn't had the best performances out here in Vermont, uh, just like specifically on the course. But to see him out here that dialed, 49 out of 54, that's, I don't know, I mean, one or two misses maybe throughout the whole thing. So an incredible performance. Uh, he's just, what is he, I think three putting world titles short of Yeti at this point? Well, you know, I, we all know he can throw far, and if his if his putter is on, you know you gotta like his chances. He's accomplished mm -hmm. pretty much everything you can in the sport. Mm -hmm. There's really just one feather in his cap that he needs to get there, and I, I know he'll be looking to bring his A game this week. Yeah, no question. Um, curious to see how a lot of those, you know, the the classically great players that we've seen over the last handful of years, we're really seeing a new class come into the scene. Um, you know, last time we were here at Vermont, all eyes were on Eagle as the young and up, up and coming star, maybe to crack through and, and get his first win. Uh, we haven't quite seen that yet, but I, you never know. I mean, Eagle popped off randomly last year at European Open on one of the best performances we've ever seen on the course. So Obviously, we're never counting him out. It's good to see him locked in early. Yep, it's just a matter of putting it together for him at the right time, but we all mm -hmm. know what he's capable of. Couldn't be more excited to get into this event. We're going to take a, a quick commercial break. When we come back, we are going to uh, get a little insight into Paige Shu. Mm. Welcome to the PDGA Masters Disc Golf World Championships from beautiful Flagstaff. I know I worked hard last year and it paid off, but it's so hard to do it twice. It's always just been a dream. I had to adjust quite a bit. I know everybody else had to adjust more. I love the pressure. It makes me play better. It makes me more focused. Tasty off the tee there for Joe Revere. Champion, back to back, Joe Revere! <laughs> been talking a lot about it already and we're going to continue to talk about it this week Paige Shu and Greg Barsby both had just some of the most memorable performances here in 2018 we had a, an unbelievable opportunity yesterday to sit down actually both with Paige and Greg to Love look that. over those 2018 highlights we're going to show you some of what we got uh, with Paige right now
Well, just an absolutely heartwarming look back at that championship with Paige. Yeah, I remember talking to her, uh, you know, when she's coming back on tour this year. Just, I mean, it's been six years at this point. She said it almost feels like a dream, like it was another lifetime, you know. She's married. She's got a new last name. She's got a child. It's a totally different page. Yeah, well, it was it was great to just kind of walk through it and kind of tell her what she was, uh, have her tell us what she was feeling on the inside, sort of trying to control those waves of emotion. Um, you know, it's something you can't really practice. You don't practice closing out a world championship. Yeah. Um, so you don't know how it's going to feel till you get there. And getting that from the champion's perspective was really insightful. And, you know, it's um, useful to remember as we're watching this week and we see players get close to something that really would be a career, maybe even a lifetime achievement for them. Absolutely. You know, that wave of adrenaline that pumps through your body, you can either ride the wave or that wave will ride you. Uh, we've seen many people... You know, you get close to the sun, and it's just, it's tough to close it out. Um, you know, I think back to 2018, James Conrad was on that lead card, uh, and I think a lot of people were taking him to win that round. Uh, first shot, birdie, and then after that, you know, did struggle down the stretch. He eventually would come back to win in 2021. So, you know, even if we do some see some people stumble, it's always just about the bigger narrative. You know, what's next? How do we build from here? Well, and, and Greg, um, as we were doing his interview yesterday, was telling us about how he was keeping an eye on Paul McBeth's score in particular because Paul was not on his card, but he knew as soon as Paul was in the clubhouse, that was the mark that he knew was safe. If he, if he crossed that threshold, he was going to be there. So um, some great interviews that we got yesterday. I want to invite everyone to, to check our, PD, our PDGA YouTube channel mm -hmm. this week. You can see the full-length interviews. We'll also be showing segments on DGN. Uh, throughout the broadcast so we're really excited about that one gentleman who knows what it's like to close out a world championship you'll see on your screen right now is mr paul Macbeth. just some unbelievable stats uh in front of us right now it, it, truly unreal i mean comparing the modern day goat to you know i think most people would say the goat of disc golf here uh paul Macbeth on a 10 year streak of finishing first or second at worlds unreal only to consider that Kenny Climo had one more year on him. So we are fast approaching Paul McBeth's chance to start chipping away at the champs' stats all time. Yeah, we all talk about that nine-in-a-row mark being untouchable, and I have to say I'd probably agree that it is yeah. untouchable. But there's this other mark, this 10-year streak of uh, – sorry, 11-year streak of top two finishes at Worlds, which is you know just mind-boggling itself. McBeth, a chance to match that this week. Mm -hmm also has a chance to match Climo's all-time major mark, 18 PDGA majors. Listen, all of these stats are great, and all of these record opportunities matter, but we need to think about the fact that Macbeth has not been playing the last few events. He had the shoulder injury out of the European Open, which forced him to withdraw from our last major, and he's really only spent the last couple of weeks rehabbing with Seth Muncy from Disc Golf Strong. Uh, you've seen maybe some Instagram videos or some social media stuff start to leak out, but it's really going to be interesting to me to see how Macbeth comes out firing this week. Uh, and, you know, a five-round tournament for somebody who's maybe limping into the finish line a little bit, uh, it's really going to be a gutsy performance, I think, for him to close it out and, and even get into that top two. No doubt. If he... If he if he gets it this week, if he even finishes top two, I think it's going to be one of the achievements of his career, of his mm -hmm. illustrious career. Yeah. So really interesting. Tough to bet that one. Hard to see how yes. it's going to go. You know, Macbeth's got the, the injury, but how can you bet against Macbeth at Worlds? No, nobody has ever made money betting against Macbeth, and I'm just going to stick with that plan. I don't know that I would select him for, like, my podium, who I would assume is going to be in the podium, but I think none of us on planet Earth would be shocked with Paul Macbeth taking this one down or finishing in the mix late. Well, if you do bet on Macbeth and you win some money, I got a good way to spend it. Today's show sponsor. Perfect. Touch Disc Golf. Um, these guys make some unbelievable products. It's a brand new company focused on helping disc golfers with disc golf organization storage and display. Their first uh, flagship product is called uh, the Disc Display. It's this wall-mounted disc rack. Comes in three sizes, small, medium, and large. They'll fit three putters and four drivers and the small up to the large size fits seven putters or 10 drivers. So these products are really engineered to last a lifetime. They're made from sustainable eco-friendly materials. They're easy to s install. You know, you can say goodbye to messy storage bins and stacks of discs that clutter up in your home. It's time to display your passion with touch disc golf. 
So we encourage you to sign up for the Touch Disc Golf mailing list. Follow them on social media um, for a chance to win three disc displays at Touch Disc Golf. Honestly, I like it. It's it's. I will say, I just moved to a new house and I took everything off the wall and have now remounted stuff on the wall. This, I feel like this is going to mount pretty solid. Uh, one of the things that we have in San Francisco, not a lot of yard space for people to be putting in the backyard, but we do have garages. I'm thinking this would be like great, like, you know, your basket's across the garage, you're over here, mount this on the wall and you got a little putter holder for your practice putting. I think there's tons of uses for this. Oh, I'm pumped, you know, when, when they told us that they were sponsoring the show and they were sending out some samples, my first question was, well, can I take yeah. some of those home? I mean, I'm setting up a new office right now, I'm oh. thinking about doing some wall displays for mm -hmm. my discs, this would be perfect. Oh, yeah, actually, you could, you could mount them this way and then kind of like rotate them fresh or something. I'm thinking for my YouTube interviews, I could maybe have like a fresh display. This That's sweet. right, I might pick up a uh, 23 uh, Pro Worlds disc and you know, ah, pop it on there. throw it right on there in the right. front. I see that. That's cross promoting. Exactly. That's beautiful. That's right. <laughs> well, um, let's take a look now over to the FPO side of things. We have more history on the line with Owen Scoggins, who we know just closed out her first uh, FPO Elite mm -hmm. Series win at, at DGLO. She's got a chance to become just the second woman to win an FP40 world title and an FPO world title in the same year. Beth Tanner did it, 1995. Wow, wow 95. I got to assume the field was a little less deep back then. Still an incredible accomplishment. The fact that Owen and, and Beth, I'm assuming, were getting to their peak of play at this stage of their career is mind-blowing. You know, Owen seems to be the unicorn that keeps getting better as the years go on. You know, nobody works harder than Owen on the practice green. She's out at 7 a.m. playing rounds before her round at times. She grinds, and it is so good to see that work paying off. It's unbelievable to see her game peaking at this age, over 40 years old. She's at her all-time highest mm -hmm. career rating, PDGA rating of 982, <laughs> which comes in as the third highest rating of any woman who's ever played the game. Wow. At that, 42 years old. It, it, it truly is unreal. And especially when you think, you know, we have Holland Hanley, we have Ella Hansen, we have, I mean, Paige Pierce has been throwing bombs forever. We have all these women out driving her by 40, 50, 100 feet sometimes. And she's coming out there making the putts and hanging with the best of them. Well, um, I know I'm going to be watching Owen very closely this week. Kristen, I think a lot of people feel the favorite. If she's not, if Kristen doesn't get this one, you got to love Owen's chances. No question. And and honestly, I think before the European Championships, there was no doubt in anyone's mind that Kristen was going to come in here and just roll this whole tournament. Um, she played some of the best golf of her life for those first two rounds, but that last round was a little bit of a clunker. And, you know, she's commented on it. It was an emotional roller coaster. There had been kind of talks about an elbow injury, nothing really confirmed. But I am going to be curious to see how that first round goes for Kristen and if she can just go pedal to the metal like we all know she's capable of. Well, if she is nursing that elbow injury, we all know she's capable of playing through it. <laughs> yes. She did last year. She was uh, nursing an elbow injury and took down Worlds. Yeah. I mean, last year uh, it did limit her backhand power, um, but obviously – we all know how that one played out. She won in uh, handed fashion. Now, the difference, though, we're in the woods and a lot more OB on these tracks than we were experiencing last year in Emporia. So I think maybe paying attention to the command that she has on the end of her flights, uh, stuff like that is going to be important to her finish out here. Yeah, she talked about how Emporia, just uh, with the open courses, allowed her to really make her shot selection based on how she was feeling. She could throw the forehead, she could mm -hmm. throw the back on, on, on most holes. Out here, the lines, the shape of the fairway is really going to dictate those choices. Yeah, no question. So we're really going to need to see a well-rounded player out here, whether it's going to be from the MPO side or the FPO side. Um, you know, I think I think if the strokes separation is more than one or two, I'm going to be super shocked. I think we're due for an absolute barn burner. Absolutely. It's unbelievable disc golf in store for us this week. Before all the disc golf got started, however, you and I took a trip down to mm -hmm. Burlington to check out the scene and see just what it's like up here in northern Vermont. We got a nice little uh, look back at that. We're going to check it out after this commercial break.
Welcome to the PDGA Masters Disc Golf World Championships from beautiful Flagstaff. Somehow I just like never satisfied with my work, you know, or practice hard enough. I always have questions with myself, so I'm just gonna throw and hope for the best. Another easy birdie for Own Scoggins. You're now a three-time world champion in Flagstaff, Own Scoggins. Well, Corey, sitting here under the lights, I'm getting a little hot. You know what sounds really good with me right now? What does? Some Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Oh, you know sign me any? up. I do know where we can any where you can get some, and it's in Burlington, Vermont, one of my favorite cities across this great nation. Let's take a look. Hello, everybody. Johnny Disc Golf here with the PDGA's Disc Golf Destinations. We've got a lot of great projects in the works already going to Vegas, Austin, and Raleigh, North Carolina. But today, I'm standing in beautiful Burlington, Vermont. This college town nestled on the shores of Lake Champlain is gonna be the jumping off point for Smuggler's Notch, just 45 minutes up the road. Here we are on Church Street, really the heart and soul of downtown Burlington. This four block stretch laid in brick plays home to over 85 storefronts. This neighborhood has been designated a national historical district and plays home to another historical business, Ben & Jerry's. Here we are at the flagship Ben & Jerry's store located right here on Church Street. Let's go have a bite. Milk and cookies, waffle cone, it's an instant classic really. Ben & Jerry's, doesn't get better. Burlington has plenty of nightlife, but no bar more iconic than the one behind me, Nectar's. The preeminent live music venue in the city played host to the iconic jam band Fish throughout the late 80s and early 90s. Honey Road, just another one of the wonderful eateries here on Church Street. The vibe, uh, it's beautiful right now. Summer air, 67 degrees. It's hard to argue with that, especially when we got such delicious food. The waterfront area and Burlington bike path has always been a staple here in the city. Home to the marina, a skate park, and so much history. There are over 200 shipwrecks at the bottom of the water, as well as one of the most fun-loving mythical creatures, Champy. Here we are on the first hole of Shifalini Park, a nine hole course just under 2,000 feet. It was only put in the ground here in 2021. A new disc golf course, an up and coming disc golf scene, and I am here with Jonas, a new member of the disc golf community out here. Yeah, I moved out here pretty recently. Um, I moved from Flagstaff, Arizona, which has disc golf courses out the wazoo, uh -huh. and it's good to see like a new course, um, you know, people getting more excited about it here. It's good practice, you know, keep it, keep it in the lines. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm here with somebody who knows some of the holes. Uh, let's get out and throw some, shall yeah, we? Yeah, let's do it. There's plenty of great breweries here in Burlington, but none with a view quite like this one. Foam Brewers down in the marina in that waterfront area has maybe the best view of the lake. Some nice beers to boot. Yeah. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Disc Golf Destinations. We had a blast showing you just a snippet of what Burlington has to offer, and we'll catch you in the next one. Well, Corey, one of the things I love about this sport, and I think a lot of people love about the sport, are the amazing places it takes you. Um, not just the courses, but the cities and the culture that you get to experience on tour. Burlington was no different. It was so much fun down there. Tell us a little bit about your experience. Burlington, truly one of my favorite cities uh, in the States uh, that I've traveled to. Special place in my heart, I got to admit, because I have family nearby, and so it's always a good time to sit, go out to eat on Church Street with family, uh, maybe sip on a heady topper or a focal banger. That's like a key part of the Vermont experience. Um, but really, like Burlington is nice, 
but the entire state of Vermont just speaks to me. Um, I, I'm a, if you're familiar with Oregon, it has a very familiar or very similar feel to Oregon in that it's just rock, like you can see behind us, it is a endless supply of natural beauty. Um, but whether it's Bingham Falls, just ne uh, right next to Smuggler's Notch, or you're going to the Alchemist Brewery, there's just like so many things to do if you're an outdoorsy type. The Wi-Fi may not be the strongest out here. The cell signal may be patchy at times. Uh, but other than that, it's just a treat everywhere you look. Well, it is. It was hard for us to make the choices about you know where to tour and where to shoot. Mm -hmm. So much more to doing in Burlington. We'll be actually airing some more of that segment throughout the week, um, mm -hmm. part of our Disc Golf Destination series. We're, we didn't just do Ver, uh, Vermont. We've also been to Vegas. We've done a Disc Golf Destinations in Austin. Mm -hmm. Just finished wrapping shooting in Raleigh uh, for the upcoming U.S. Women's Championship. I love it. Where we got a tour from Schwebe. Uh, Brian oh, Schweberger is our host. <laughs> so much fun there. Wow. And we also got to meet up with some legends like Beth Tanner, who we spoke about really? earlier. Really? Who's actually coming back to participate. I believe in the FA60. She's gone back to amateur. It's been so long. She's playing an FA60 this year in U.S. Oh, Women's. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to say, so Raleigh is one of the few cities that has a great disc golf scene that I just have not found my way to. So I'm honestly super excited for that Disc Golf Destinations episode. Uh, I hear the golf is great out there. I know we have some of our own uh, PDJ employees that are based out of there, so I hear glowing reports, but I, I can't wait to see all that, that coverage. Yeah, well, we'll be, uh, we'll be rolling that out over the next couple of weeks leading into U.S. Women. So please follow us along on PDJ's YouTube channel where we're posting all this content. Speaking of YouTube, let's talk a little bit about how to take in the action mm -hmm. this week. We're actually signing off here at the PDGA Live Show for the week, we will not be broadcasting during competition. We're going to hand things over to the Disc Golf Network. Mm -hmm. Disc Golf Network has been working long and hard this year to develop really a fantastic product. Uh, it's going to be live all week long over on the Disc Golf Network. And of course, coming out on YouTube through the post-production partners, whether that's Jomez, Ace Run Pro, uh, Gatekeeper, and I'm sure some other little snippets. Uh, I will be doing some interviews with our favorite pro players over on my YouTube channel, Johnny Disc Golf, and uh, you know a host of other independent media creators that are out here just doing their thing. Absolutely. So I believe the, uh, the first day is going to be free to watch on YouTube, as Thank always. You. And then the final two days for PDGA uh, members, active PDGA members, free access to the Disc Golf Network broadcast for the uh, for Saturday and the Sunday championship. So that's a great value for PDGA members. Also, just to remind everyone, PDGA members get a 50% discount on the full DGN subscription. Very true. So take advantage of that. Watch all five days of Worlds. So you won't even have to make any decisions then. Oh, it's going to be great. Honestly, I'm just taking in a breath. We are on the eve of the World Championships and the energy is in the air. You know, over the last week, we've been here on site uh, it started off a little slow, a little foggy, a little rainy, but over the last three or four days, the momentum is building, the hive is alive down there at Tournament Central, and everyone is just ready to fire. Well, I'm ready to head down the course and experience some of that energy myself. Corey, I can't thank you enough for joining us today for PDJ Live. I'm Matt Rothstein with the PDGA. Worlds, it's about to happen. <laughs>